Now, for first and first out, this is the first one that we're focusing on in this chapter. First and first out, we assume that cost of goods sold is based on oldest purchases, and the oldest purchase batch will turn into customer's hand first, will turn into cost of goods sold expense first. Okay, so going back to that Coke example, if earlier I purchased a batch for each and every Coke, average it out, each bottle worth 50 cents. February 1st, I purchased another batch, each and every bottle worth 51 cents. And March 1st, I purchased another batch that worth 52 cents. If a customer comes to purchase 10 bottles of Coke, I would assume that they're purchasing from the January 1st batch first. So if that batch of Coke, there's, let's say, 1,000 bottle in it, until I sold out the first 1,000 bottle transaction, before that, I would just use 50 cents for each and every bottle. Until it reaches 1,001, then I use the 52 cents to assign that transaction. Okay, so the oldest cost, the 50 cents one, turns into cost of goods sold expense first. So even though in reality, perhaps the customer actually is purchasing the one with the, uh, with, within the latest batch that we purchased, we still assume that they're purchasing the oldest cost first. Okay, so on the other hand, since the oldest cost turns into cost of goods sold, the recent one, recent cost later on when we count inventory that's in our warehouse still, that becomes ending inventory, which basically is inventory asset that you would see on balance sheet. So again, if there's three purchases transactions that occurred earlier, whenever we start to sell items to customer, first and first out, we will always assume that customer is purchasing this earlier transaction, earlier inventory first. Okay, so if I purchased 1,000 bottles earlier in January, and then I have another 1,000 bottle, another 1,000 bottle in March and February, Earlier, the cost is 50 cents, and I assume the first 1,000 bottle that I sold out to customer, whenever I make sales transaction, the first 1,000 bottles, I will use this 50 cents as the cost. Starting from 1,001, then I will use this 51 cents for the sales transaction of cost. So keep in mind that these inventory methods, it only applies whenever we start selling the products. If we're just purchasing transactions, if we're just purchasing inventory, then we're just accumulating inventory account. We're not using any of these inventory costing methods. So we start to use these methods whenever we start selling the products to customer. So remember in chapter five, we talked about a lot of purchase transactions, and then we move on to talk about sales transaction. So the sales transactions is where this, these inventory costing methods start to apply to the business. Okay, so we assign the cost and when we start to sell to customer the first 1,000 bottles. And if a customer comes to purchase 10 more after these transactions, then we assign the 51 cents cost. Okay, so this is first in, first out. Let's take a look at an example here. Okay, this is an inventory record. So this table later on we'll be doing an exercise using this inventory record. You see three main columns here. You have the purchases, transactions, purchases, entries, and in the middle, when we start to sell items to customer, we have cost of goods sold expense incurred. Then between the two, the net of the two will be the inventory on hand at the end of the month. Okay, so let's start from July 1st. Let's start from July 1st and assume that at the beginning inventory, we have two sets of DVD players. And each player earlier our company purchased from the vendor at $40 each. Okay, so you see inventory on hand, July 1st, we have two players. Each was purchased earlier at $40. This is the cost that we used up to purchase from our vendor, purchase side of the transaction. So altogether, we have inventory cost $80 now. Okay, so this is the first entry. Now let's say later on we want to purchase six more sets of DVD players. 
And now we notice that the purchase cost that our vendor is offering us is $45 each. So in this case, we'll be adding this information of the six sets of DVD players to purchases column. Okay, we have six more of the same type of product, but now the purchase cost is $45. So it wasn't the same as what we had earlier in the beginning of July. So the cost of this product inflated a little, increased. Okay, so now altogether we have two batches of the same type of product, one at a cost 40, one at a cost 45. All together we have eight DVD players. Okay. So if we apply first in, first out, now if we want to sell four sets of DVD players to customers, can you tell me how should we assign the cost to these transactions? We have two sets of DVD players at $40 that was purchased earlier. We had an additional one that was purchased July 5th. Later on, six more DVD sets at $45. So if I want to sell four sets of DVD players, should I assign them at $40 or $45? 45 for all four or just for a couple of them? Just for two. So the beginning two I'll be using $40. And then I will also have two of them that I use 45. Okay, why? Because beginning $40, there's only two DVD players in stock. So I cannot assign more than two because there's only two that was purchased earlier at $40. So if I were to purchase, if I were to sell four units, I will pick, I will assume that customer is choosing two from the earlier batch, two from the latest batch, first in, first out. Okay. So in this case, it would see two assigned at 40, two assigned at 45. So if I change this problem to only sell two DVD players, then basically I will erase this part. You will only see two assigned at $40, $40, that's all. If I were to say that this problem, I'm only selling two DVD players, then it will be just the original cost because the first Inventory that's purchased, I want to assume that customer is purchasing from this batch, and I sell it first. First in, first out. Out to customer's hands. Okay, so after these, this transaction here, can you tell me how much inventory do we have on hand, and how do we assign the cost to this? How much inventory do we have on hand? We still have four DVD sets, and how do we assign the cost to those? Would it be 40 or 45? 45, right? You sold out two from earlier batch, two from latest batch, so you still have four from latest batch, 45. Okay, now the right-hand side, this is just totaling the cost. We used the number of units times the purchase cost. Okay, keep in mind here that this is not retail price. This is not the price that we're selling to our customer. All of these are inventory purchase costs. Okay, this is the first part of the operations cycle, purchase costs. But when we sell it, later on, we'll, of course, we'll mark up a price as retail price, and the differences between that price and these will be the gross profit. Okay, but this is an inventory record, so all the numbers you see here is purchase cost. The cost that we use up the cost that we pay to our vendor and the cost that we're assigning to our customer when we journalize inventory cost transaction. Okay, so we have a beginning inventory transaction. We have a new purchase transaction. There's a sales transaction on cost. Next, if we want to purchase an additional nine more DVD sets at $47, where do we include this information? The middle, the right, or the left? The left. For purchases transaction, purchases information, we'll be including 9 times 47 in the left column, purchase column. Okay, so this inventory record you see left side is the new inventory that we get into our warehouse, that we purchase in from our vendor. Middle part, when we start selling it to customer, remember each and every sales transaction you have you have either cash sales 
or accounts receivable. The first entry and the second entry will always identify cost of goods sold and inventory costs. So for every sales transaction, we have two types of transactions to journalize, right? One is re with the retail price, one is the cost. This is the cost that you will see in the second transaction. Okay, in chapter five, we directly tell you, the problem will directly tell you it's 200 or 1,000. But here we're trying to identify what is recorded in the second transaction as cost of goods sold. If you journalize these events, you will see 170 in the second transaction here. Okay, and the sales transaction, the second one, that accounts for inventory costs. Right, I'm going to ask you to calculate these four numbers, add them together, and tell me what it is. Cost of goods sold, these two, and inventory on hand, these two. If you add them all together, tell me what the number is. Anybody got the answer? Cost of goods sold is 170, and then if you add the right-hand side inventory on hand, what will be the total dollar amount? Seven hundred seventy-three. Okay, let's keep this number. Later, I'll tell you what this means. Okay, so this comes from cost of goods sold and the total ending inventory equals 770, 773, 170 here, and also um, 603 here. Okay, add them together is 773. Later we'll be comparing this amount with other inventory methods. All right, so as opposed to first in, first out, we have before we go into LIFO, this blue shaded journal entry here is what I just mentioned here. So what we're getting from that number, the middle part of this column, the 170, you will see in journal entries, the third one. Okay, the first one here is just purchasing inventory on account. The first transaction that occurred here, 270. And then the middle part, if we start to sell these inventory to customers, then you have the middle two transactions, sales transaction. Okay, first one is the retail price of the product, which is $80 per DVD set. And the middle part, this blue shaded number is here, is the one that we just identified. Okay, the two of them we sell it at 40, two of them at 45. The inventory costs, we assign 40 to two of them and 45 to the other two. Okay, last transaction here, simply an another purchase transaction, we increase inventory and on account. Nine DVD sets at $47. So what we're trying to get to is the bracket here. How do we assign cost of goods sold? 